Okay, we're on here tonight to talk about elderberry syrup. My name is Peggy Payne. Sophie is to my, this way, but I don't know where she is on your screen. And Lindsay's this way. <laughs> and we're gonna be sharing this with you tonight. Um, we've had a couple of people that like can't even talk right now. So um, we're pitch hitting and, and jumping on here and letting you know um, what this is all about. But I have dropped in the chat um, a recipe, and I was just starting to say that there's not necessarily just one recipe, but this is a good one. I've used it several times. Sophie's used it. And Sophie is going to be our demo queen. <laughs> um, do you want me to talk or do you want to just talk me talk through? Uh, you can talk if you want, or I can talk you through it. Um, what we're what she's going to show is she's got a half a cup of organic dried elderberries. She has three and a half cups of purified or distilled water. There she goes, just putting it in the pot. I am Rachel Ray, guys. There you go. You need to have that overhead camera um, facing down. And then she's going to put in a cinnamon stick if she has one. No, I actually got my cinnamon bark essential oil instead. Okay. Do not put it in. Do not put your essential oh, oil. Oh, you're right. In. Yeah, I almost, I forgot about that. Okay. But if you do have um, like cinnamon sticks, you can throw one of those in. But Sophie's showing you that we can also use our essential oils. Um, or I like me and sometimes you just grab what you have. You can just use like ground cinnamon. So I've done. Yes, amazing. you can use ground cinnamon. Um, and I, and I've also got a, a like a, piece of ginger. I would probably break off a smaller section of this, but this is, is fresh ginger. You can use powdered ginger like Sophie is showing, or you can also later, not now, use your ginger vitality oil. And um, for this, this says one small piece. And so what I do is I, sorry, you can't, is I just sprinkle it a little, uh, like a generous amount, because I don't mind the taste of ginger. If you do start, start on a, with a low amount and then you know, up it as you make different batches. If you've never used ginger before, um, it is actually kind of hot in a good way. Like it'll, it'll really, um, I do a ginger drink with that I use um, either powdered ginger or fresh ginger in, and it hits the back of your throat, like I said, in a good way, especially with a little bit of a sore throat. It's great. I don't taste it or feel it when in my elderberry syrup. So don't, don't worry about that. But a little heat is really not bad. Um, another option is anise seed also, but the, uh, the recipe doesn't say that. So, well, if there's a ginger essential oil, I normally would use that. I'm just out right now. Once again, I would put that in afterwards, not while it's cooking. Right. The reason we don't put the essential oils in while it's cooking is it can, you'll get the flavor, but you'll actually destroy some of the positive therapeutic qualities or constituencies as we call it. So we want to wait till later. We also want to use like raw honey. Hopefully you've got um, local raw honey. Do not buy store-bought honey. If it's like a brand, do not buy it. It's not even real. It's probably some sort of nasty syrup from China. Do not get it. Um, seriously, <laughs> get organic. Now you could also use like blue agave syrup. You could use any natural sweetener and it's gonna kind of be by taste. Um, this says half a cup of, Sophie, do not put your honey in. <laughs> okay, do not do what Vanna just did. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because just like the essential oils, it will actually break down and destroy your honey, the qualities, the good qualities of your honey. You'll get the sweetening. I'll just add some afterwards as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but honey itself has some great qualities, and we can talk about that in a minute. This does have a little bit of sweetener to it because otherwise it elderberries themselves don't taste that great um, on just their own. They're not like super sweet. So you do want a little bit of honey, but also you want the positive effects of raw unfiltered honey. So do not put it in <laughs> after. Guys, I've made it a million times. I was going to like show you the finished product. I know what I'm doing. I just didn't, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> That's okay. And I meant to grab and say that. So you put in the, the spices, if, they, if you're using spices, not the oils, you put in the berries and you put in the water. And so then she's gonna put that on her stove. This is a stove top recipe. She's gonna put that on her stove and she's gonna boil that for about 30 minutes. Um, there's an alternative that I wrote in the recipe where you can use an Instapot or you can use it, whatever pressure cooker you have. I have an Instapot brand. Um, you can put it in there 
you can put it on high pressure for 20 minutes and then let it natural, naturally depressurize. But if you've ever used your Instapot, you know, it takes a while to pressurize and it takes a while to depressurize and then to cook. So it actually would take a little bit longer than 30 minutes probably to cook it for 20. So, but what I like about it is I can just set it and walk away. I don't have to watch it. But if you don't have an Instapot, you can do it on the stove. Some people say that you need to let it reduce by half which makes it more of a syrup. But basically I would just do it for the 30 minutes. Um, some, again, there's all kinds of variations on this recipe. They'll tell you to even in like the Instapot afterwards to keep it in the pot and keep it on the, um, like you could put it on broil, uh, not broil, saute or whatever and let it boil down to reduce it. But that just means you end up with less. So I <laughs> just leave it like it is and it works just fine. Okay, somebody messaged. Uh, and I am the priest. you can do things incorrectly and still be okay. That is so true. Um, but after it cooks, um, after Sophie shows it's cooked, we'll show this at the end. We're gonna talk in between and tell you some of the benefits and everything. But afterwards, you're gonna strain off all of that, just leaving the liquid. Let it cool to not quite room temperature. You just want it to cool off the boiling, cool to where you can almost touch the sides pretty well. Then you can add the honey and your essential oils to it at that point. I like to do, uh, Sophie was showing using cinnamon bark essential oil. These are our Vitality line. I also like to put thieves in it because why the heck not? I'm all about the thieves. I put ginger in mine as well. And actually, like I said, you can use any seed or you could use any um, essential oil. I think we have any essential oil. I'm not sure about that. I'll have to look, but you can put those in um, after when you're adding the honey, not before. Okay, so now that we've gone through the recipe, Sophie started us off and she's gonna get that going. We're gonna move into just talking about like, why? Does, is anybody here, have you ever made elderberry syrup? Okay, Sophie and I are the only ones. Okay, so can't see Hannah or Chelsea. Um, and yeah, and Lindsay said she's got the stuff. So, and Joyce has the stuff. So we want you to do this. I don't know if anybody else has actually gotten the kit. Oh, we got some newbies. Um, but it's super, there you go. I love that kit. It's really super cute. And it, what Joyce has calls for a little bit less. Like it's supposed to only make one, um, one jar like this. The recipe I'm telling you about is going to make about a quart. It's going to be make, it's going to be the, the amount of water, like three and a half. It'll maybe be down to three cups. So a little bit less than a quart. Um, store it in a glass jar. When you're done, store it in the refrigerator and it will last some say six weeks. I say longer. Uh, don't worry too much about it, but you want to go through it. So if you have a bunch of people in your family or you're giving this away as gifts or you're going to sell it or whatever, you might want to double or triple, just depending, because you can do you can do at least three times this recipe in your Instapot, for instance, um, or a bigger pot on your stove. But you saw Sophie was just using a regular small pot. It's not that because whatever would hold that three and a half cups. But the problem that we have um, so we've asked who has done this, who has had um, elderberry in some form? Okay, so because there's gummies out there, there are, okay, so Chelsea has, there are syrups, other syrups out there that you can buy. Just watch the ingredients in them because some of those have ingredients that are just not good for you. Certainly would want to know that it's organic. I found some organic dried elderberries um, and I, the first year, I thought I'd gotten a good source when I first bought them, found out that I was getting them from some Slavic nation and I don't know what their standards are. Um, this I researched a little bit better and this is from the Amish in Pennsylvania. Um, so, and it's, they're organics, so they're good. But a year ago, my husband and I planted elderberry plants. We actually got some starts from somebody and this year, it took a year, but this year we actually had elderberries. So I actually harvested this much um, this year. It's in my freezer and I'm excited that I have my own, but I also have these left over from last year. Um, and the gummies, right, are not enough of a, joy, of a dosage. Um, 
Okay. So, oh yeah. Okay. So just Joyce, Sophie's asking if you could paste the link to that kit in here because it's a great way to get started. You have everything in that little kit. It's super cute, but you can again also go. But one of the things that happened with buying elderberries like from Amazon is they doubled in price the first year that they got really, really popular. So be aware of that as well. Um, okay. So she's got the link in there. If somebody wants to buy it. Um, okay. But the problem we have is that this time of year, our emotional health and our physical health declines. It's partly due to the fact that we call this these the sugar months from Halloween, oh, how cute, all the way through till like Easter time. So about six months out of the year, we are on one sugar fest after another. We've got Thanksgiving coming up. We got pies and cakes and cinnamon rolls and stuff like that. And at Christmas time, we've got same thing, pies, cakes and candies and all that stuff. And then Valentine's Day comes along and then, you know, St. Patrick's Day. And, and it's not just candy and sugar, it's alcohol and like more people drink alcohol in around the holidays and over the winter months. And all of these things have a negative, especially in excess, a negative impact on our health. So we also get less sunlight, which means we don't get natural conversion for vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D is actually a hormone, but we can get it through sun exposure. Um, we have colder days, we have more sugar in our systems, we're more sedentary, we don't get out and do like my husband and I do so much in the summer, but as the days are getting dark at five o'clock, you know, where they were nine o'clock, we're inside, we're sitting down a lot more, and we're just not as, as, as active and movement, but we're also more stressed uh, with the holidays and we're busy, 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 and maybe traveling. And then also potentially um, around other people who are going through the same thing and get uh, sick. So from the center of disease control, we know that antibiotics and similar drugs together with antimicrobial agents have been used for the last 70 years to treat patients who have infectious diseases. Since the forties, um, they, these drugs have greatly reduced illness and death from infectious diseases. However, the drugs have been used so widely and for so long that those infectious orga organisms and antibiotics are designed to kill, the antibiotics are designed to kill, have adapted to them have become very resistant to them and therefore the drugs are less effective. Each year in the United States, at least 2 million people have been infected with bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics and at least 23,000 people die each year as a direct result of these infections. Um, that's a direct quote from the CDC. So Lindsay's now gonna to talk to us about preventative health rather than reactive health. Yeah, so, um... So often the world gets so caught up in diagnosing and treating the problems. And again, we're not doctors. Doctors definitely have their place and they're so awesome and so supportive. Um, but a lot of times um, we get caught up in reacting to the issue rather than looking at the cause. So again, we love doctors, we're not doctors, but uh, we've done a lot of research and there's some really, really there's some really good stuff out there. So do your own research, but, um, <clears throat> but again, we get caught up in, in all this. We treat inflammation, we fix headaches, we treat pain. We really, uh, <laughs> she's so cute. Um, we, um, we just fix the issue, um, or try to fix the issue. Um, but, uh, and we're just kind of taught that's, what you do we're just kind of taught you take this for this and that's just how America is um and um most people go to the doctor when they're sick so um so you go to get fixed and for most people it's easier um to treat the issues rather than stop and find out what's underneath it all um and there is a lot of research out there so definitely advocate for yourself um, and look into, into the root issues instead of just taking whatever over the counter, whatever the commercial tells you to take. <laughs> um, when we really need to be asking, what can I do to support my body on a regular basis? So not just the, you know, it's almost like a, like a get rich quick thing. Like I just want to get fixed fast without knowing what's causing this to prevent it. 
you know, so that's just kind of the difference between preventative health and reactive health. So what can we do? Um, tonight, we're here to tell you about elderberry syrup, but there's also a lot of other things. I've already mentioned sugar. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But why elderberry syrup? Elderberries have been around forever, literally ever. Um, and they contain vitamin A, potassium, vitamin C, folate, calcium, iron, and fiber. Research shows that the use of elderberries can shorten the duration of flu by about three to four days. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. Along with lessening the symptoms severity if taken within the first 24 hours of having the flu. So most of us now have heard in the last few years about if you get in with the flu and the doctors give you, okay, somebody help me out. Is it called Tamiflu or something like that? I mean, I haven't taken it. They say that it can really reduce but you're taking, again, more chemicals, more like Lindsay was talking about, just reactive things. But we can actually make our elderberry syrup and start taking, especially if you know stuff is out there, um, like if you're at work and you know coworkers, or like the other day when my husband started feeling bad and he started saying it was, we've got a renovation going on. He thought it was the dust of the renovation was getting to him. And I'm like, treat it like it's a cold. Treat it like it's a cold. <laughs> Hit it with everything. Well, I started hitting it with everything too. And honestly, like I said yesterday, I didn't feel good. I mean, I was like, my head was hurting. Um, I was, and I, the cough is like the dreaded thing for me. I did not want to start that cough. And I started hitting it with everything, including my elderberry syrup and it knocks it out. I mean, I can knock a cold out in a couple of days. Um, the other cold I had, same thing. The, it helps prevent constipation. <laughs> because it's got fiber. I mean, it's good for us. It's a fruit. Um, it improves bowel function. It reduces blood pressure. This is also good. And it protects against cardiovascular disease and helps lower uh, blood cholesterol. Extracts from the elder plant have shown to have natural antidepressant source, which is, that is, in this time of year with a less light is very, very important. Um, and they have anthocyanins in elderberries, which have shown to combat the internal consequences of natural aging, therefore improving the external in, in, uh, appearance of our skin tone and glow. So elderberries display uh, numerous anti-inflammatory activities, particularly related to this anthocyanin and vitamin A and C content, because vitamin, those are all things that are attack inflammation, which is very important. So along with making our elderberry syrup and maybe taking it, I was mentioning you might take it on a regular basis, like you could take a tablespoon a day for just maintenance. But if you know you've been, been exposed to something or you suspect you are, or you begin to feel that tickle in your throat or that headache coming on or whatever that you think is your sign, you can start increasing it to like maybe two all the way up to four. Like if you've got a full blown something, you can take up to four a day. I wouldn't continue with that. Um, Chelsea says, my Cairo has a quote on our wall that says the doctor of the future will give no medication, but will interest his patients in the care of human frame diet and the cause and prevention of disease. That is quite fitting. You're absolutely true, Kelsey. That's the uh, Chelsea. That is, that is a great quote. And that's the mentality of like the place I go to, which is a functional medicine practice is um, like Lindsay was saying, get to the source, treat it with, I mean, God gave us plants. That's what he gave us um, to feed our bodies and be our food um, and medicine as well. As uh, Hippocrates said, let your medicine be your food and your food be your medicine. So um, eating healthy is so important. So moderation, food consciousness, making better choices. Stay away from those things that are known inflammatories, um, that are maybe triggers for you. If you know what those are, like I know I cannot have gluten because of my thyroid, but I also should not have sugar for all the reasons, but I shouldn't have sugar. And I also found out I can't have dairy. So that's tough. But cutting out sugar is so important. The Loma Linda University noted that when you eat 100 grams of sugar, which is about the amount of sugar you find in a one liter bottle of soda or in lots of pieces of candy, your white blood cells are 40% less effective at killing germs. It just about cuts your immune system in half. That's hugely incredible to know. So that can cripple your immune system for up to five hours after eating sugar. Sugar impacts your white blood cells by competing for the space in those cells with vitamin C. 
And therefore, instead of vitamin C being in your cells and available, which we know helps our immune system and decreases inflammation, sugar is pushing that out. And so uh, the Linus Pauling did research in the 70s and he found out that the body, how the body uses vitamin C and he discovered that the white blood cells need vitamin C to destroy bacteria and viruses, huge. Uh, so sugar and vitamin C are similar in their chemical structure. And when you eat sugar, it directly competes in the space in your immune cells with vitamin C. The more sugar in your system, the less vitamin C can get into your white blood cells. Sugar does not help your immune system fight infection at all, and it results in a weakened defense from infections. Conversely, when your bloodstream, when in your bloodstream, essential oils can increase oxygen within your cells, especially those with monoterpenes um, or sesquiterpenes, sesquiterpenes, which is like frankincense, sandalwood, for instance, have a lot of sesquiterpenes. That helps your cells release toxins it enhances our immune system. It supports the circulatory system, respiratory, endocrine, digestive, nervous, and other body systems. And they all work together. If we're only focusing on one part, we're missing out. We're missing because all of them work together. We all know how important like gut health, gut health is. So aid in maintaining normal cellular regeneration, which is very important. Um, essential oils are high in antioxidants, which not only help to keep us from getting sick, but they also help support overall wellness every day. So hugely important to eat right, add in essential oils, and we can tell you about some in particular, drink lots of water. We all know the rule of thumb, half of your body weight in ounces. So whatever your body, let's say you're hundred pounds, let's all just drink. You would drink 50 ounces of water a day. <laughs> if you're 200 pounds, you're gonna drink hundred ounces of water a day. Just to give you uh, some simple math, get enough sleep. Uh, one of the reasons I was easily able to come down with this is I, my son started me watching this documentary and I stayed up late two nights in a row <laughs> watching the documentary when my husband was in the house coughing and boom, I, I come down. Exercise. Movement is so important. It doesn't have to be a hard workout all the time. As a matter of fact, in some cases, a hard workout isn't the best thing. Um, but if you would um, like go between cardiovascular and go to muscle building because um, strengthening exercises are great for your bones and all of that's good for your health. And so all of those are important. Now, Lindsay's going to focus on some other things, including essential oils that we can do for our good health. Yes. So I'm super excited about this part. Um, as you guys saw, I did not raise my hand with um, showing that I had made elderberry before. So this is this is my jam. This is where I'm like, I know I can teach you this. Um, <laughs> so um, we all love essential oils um, on here. And if you've never used them, you need to. They're so good. So one of our biggest essential oils, um, most popular oils from Young Living um, is called Thieves. And it is so, so good. I have my 15 milliliter, Peggy had hers too. Um, so Thieves is our immune supporting powerhouse. It's so, so awesome. Um, and as Peggy and Sophie had already said before, they add that to their, um, to their elderberry. And I'll talk about how like ingesting in a little bit. But um, so the reason this is called Thieves, it's kind of a funny name. Um, so back in, during the time of the plague, um, there were uh, grave robbers that were robbing people that had died from the plague without getting it. And they use this blend of um, oils and spices and literally they got arrested and whatever. And um, they, the, um, I guess the police said that um, they would let them off if they told them how they didn't catch the plague. So this, um, this, uh, these oils have been around for a long, long time. Um, they're so, so good for um, supporting your immune system. So Thieves is a blend of um, clove, lemon, cinnamon bark, eucalyptus, and rosemary. Um, and it has been found to be strong enough to reduce bacterial cultures by 99.99%. So this stuff is so, so good for you. Um, and it's not made in a lab. 
<laughs> um, it's so, so good. You can use it daily. Um, I make a roller with a couple other oils that I'll share in a minute. Um, put it on my feet every day. You can put it on, like Peggy has the pre-made roller that Young Living sells. Um, you can put it on your wrist. You can put it topically. You can ingest it. Um, you can put it in tea. So we actually have um, two different labels. I have this one. Um, this is our Thieves Vitality, which is just a separate label for FDA regulations um, that state that you can ingest this if you want to. You don't have to, um, but it's so good in hot tea, especially when you have a sore throat. Um, and then this one's just labeled for um, topical and aromatic use, but it's the same stuff. It's so, so good for you. Um, but my roller that I like to make is um, a mixture of thieves, um, oregano oil, and lemon and frankincense. Um, but there's so many options. You could do lemon, purification, lavender, RC. Like there's so much. Um, it's so, so good for you. So, and it's so easy. Literally just putting this on your feet or your wrist or whatever before you walk out the door can really make a difference in what happens to you so it's so so nice to have that option um and then some more uh really healthy things you can uh you can do is drink bone broth or cook with it i love i have totally switched over um all my soups i don't do chicken broth anymore i do bone broth and it's number one it tastes so much better in like cream kind of creamier I don't know it's warm it's just so good but it's so good for you for um collagen for gut health for inflammation uh, for sleep it's just so good for you um and Peggy held up she makes her own there are some that you can buy that are good quality too but you definitely want to make sure you get a really good quality one do you what brand do you have Peggy get this at Costco and it's organic bone broth. Um, it just says culinary treasures. And this is from free range chicken. So this is a chicken bone broth. Um, yeah. but even my homemade is just tastes even so much better than this. It just, there's, oh gosh, the home. And it's so simple to make. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I haven't made it either. I guess I'm not so much of a DIY person when it comes to making things that are good for you, uh, other than oil stuff. Um, but yeah, I get an organic bone broth, uh, from the grocery store and it is so good. Um, okay. So more good things. And I literally could not talk about this one enough, like supplements are so, so important. I recently got sick with you know and um I literally uh have been taking supplements and it was not so bad <laughs> um so vitamin c we all know like we grew up knowing vitamin c is so good for your immune system um but you want a high quality one um, so again, Young Living, we have it all. It's a one-stop shop for literally everything from supplements to cleaning to animal care, literally everything. So uh, vitamin C, um, vitamin D, this is so important, especially during the winter months, but really like all year long. So many people are deficient in vitamin C, uh, sorry, vitamin D. Um, and this literally affects your immune system so much. And then uh, probiotic is so, so important too. Um, this is our life nine probiotic. Literally everybody that takes it will tell you how amazing it is for your gut. It's so, so good. And then Peggy's also holding up our kids probiotic, um, which is so great too. And then, um, we also have a supplement called multigreens, which is like eating a really, really healthy salad plus so good for you <laughs> anyway. Um, and then Ningxia Red, this is the best ever. It's so good. It's um, it's actually made from the wolfberry, which is a cousin to the elderberry. So we've already talked to you off about elderberry, but um, the wolfberry is so, so good for you too. So many antioxidants that just really support your body and so much more. I can't even tell you how much this is so great. Um, so uh, those are just some of the good supplements, definitely the core supplements that I would 
say really support your immune system really well. Um, and then again, going into what what is in our house, what kind of products are we using? Um, and a lot of our household products are so harmful to your immune system. So it's just like, it just makes me so frustrated, you know, when we're told you have to clean with this, but it's also hurting your immune system. It's crazy. Um, so some of the scary ingredients um, in, um, in even just any product in your house are parabens, phylates, fragrance, aniline. I can't even pronounce some of these. Arsene, benzene. Like if you can't pronounce it, please don't use it. But also if you can pronounce it and there's a thousand Google um, warnings and like things that you can look up that are really scary, just just ditch those. They're, they're not good. So um, in the spirit of ditching and switching, we just talked about Thieves Oil. Um, so this is our Thieves Cleaner. So not only does it have all the immune supporting goodness of the oil in this cleaner, um, but it cleans <laughs> and it cleans really well. Um, and literally it's a concentrate. So one cap full of this is going to fill up a whole bottle of um, uh, in your sprayer and then the rest is water. So it's super, super um, easy and it's really uh, affordable. Like this bottle was less than $2 because it's so concentrated. Um, it's, it's just really awesome. And you don't have to worry about all these toxic things that you're breathing in. I mean, I have to clean with really toxic stuff at work and I'm thankful for the face mask that I have to wear because at least it's preventing some, but I can still smell it through. It's just, it's so harsh. Um, so this is so nice to use at home um, or if you're lucky enough in your work too. Um, but yeah, it's so important to use um, use clean cleaning products. Um, and we have a whole line of Thieves uh, cleaning products with everything from your dishwasher detergent to your laundry detergent to hand soap, like literally everything we have it all in Thieves and it's so good. Um, so yeah, those are just some of the ways you can, um, you can start making healthier choices for yourself and supporting your body um, instead of treating it when you need it, <laughs> if that makes sense. Treating the issue instead of preventing or lessening the issue. Um, so, um, and again, we're not saying that you're never gonna get sick if you use all these things. We all get sick, it's part of life, but um, but they're healthier and less toxic ways to do it uh, or to prevent or help. Um, so, so yeah, did anybody have any questions or um, want to talk about anything? I, I kind of want to see where the elderberry syrup is at, Sophie. <laughs> While she's looking, I was just going to say that one of our friends just did a science experiment with her homeschool kids where she did agar plates and she did a control and then she would, they swabbed the several different places in the house, but like they swabbed the toilet seat, they swabbed a, the outdoor handle of the door, et cetera. And then they sprayed half down or no wiped half down with Clorox ble or sorry, bleach. And then the other half they sprayed with thieves spray, just like uh, Lindsay was just saying, a cap full and a 16 ounce, that's it. And then they, they wiped it and then they rubbed those and she showed the results today. She did this a few days ago. And each time there was in the control, there was nothing, which it should be. In the one where they just wiped it down, like the toilet seat before they cleaned it, there was, there were definitely cultures growing a lot. On the bleach, there was about a third, about a half to three quarters of the same amount of cultures growing in the bleach one, but in the thieves would be one spot or one or two spots. And that's it. I mean, it literally proved the 99.9% .9 effective. Um, it was just, it was cool. And, and that was, that was held true for every part, every place that she tried in her house. So um, it's great proof. And then I've seen somebody do one with chicken where they rub chicken on the counter and then did the, um, those, uh, those breaking tube things that they use like for uh, a, a kitchen inspector. 
and you know the before and after and they do it you know straight up and thieves cleans it to where it would pass any inspection so pretty cool um, I'm not a um, <clears throat> DIYer. I mean, I will. I know how to do stuff, but I would rather buy it. I just, that's my personality. I'm like, eh, whatever. Um, but there are a few things that I'm very particular about, and I want to know exactly what's in them. So with the these products, I know exactly what's in them. I don't feel like I need to make my own laundry detergent. They have a very clean, very safe laundry detergent. So good, great. Well, the elderberry syrup that you can buy online, um, you know, there's definitely some clean ones out there. I'm not like super worried about them. Um, however, it is one of those things where if I'm using it to build up my immune system, I want to know exactly what's in it. And so I am really particular about it and I like making it myself because I want to know that the organic wolf berries are actually organic because um, sometimes people can say that and that's not it. Um, I want to use my essential oils in it and I want them to be Young Living's essential oils and then I want it to be sweetened by you know local organic honey and unless I buy my elderberry syrup here in town it won't be local to me and it's important that it's local to me you know for my immune system whatever so um, all that to say it's like a bajillion times cheaper to make it yourself. Like it's so <laughs> much cheaper to make it yourself. You get a ton of jars off of one. Like I think I get three, maybe two jars off of um, like this one batch or whatever. And it's going to cost me like probably a third of the cost that it would if I bought it in the store. Um, so it's so much cheaper and literally it takes seconds to like throw together. And then um, it is halfway through, I'll show you guys, it's halfway through right now. Um, it's still boiling on a low boil, um, very, very, very dark right now, um, and it has another about 14 minutes. And then this, this is what it looks like when it's done. And you notice how liquidy it is. It's not syrup like maple syrup. It's not like pancake syrup syrup. It's more just a liquid. And again, you could boil it down that much more and make it a little more concentrated. It might be a little more syrupy, but you're not putting a lot of sugar in it, like the honey in it, to where it would be real, real syrupy anyway. Um, but you're, you're putting quite a bit to make it sweet. Um, one little thing to let you know, I mean, like Sophie was saying about expense, you could buy a whole bag of this that'll make multiple batches of elderberry syrup, or you could buy that kit and it'll make one of these jars. Uh, it's a good way to get started. The other, this way is actually cheaper in the long run, but the other is a good way to get started because it's all in a package. But you could buy that bag and it's gonna cost you the same as buying like this size jar of elderberry syrup that somebody has made. That, I mean, they're, the people making it, the, the, they're, it's very expensive to buy, even if you're buying it from somebody like me. Um, but uh, the, so it is one of those things where it's definitely better and you get to, Will you put the link to the bag you got in the chat? I will at least tell you the name of it and you can look it up on Amazon. <laughs> um, but the other is elderberries themselves raw, do not eat. Like don't think that you're gonna get a bag of these and you're gonna stick a bunch in your mouth. You can do that with wolfberries because I said in the chat, I actually have made the syrup with wolfberries and elderberries together just to get that extra wolfberry stuff in there, which is so really good. But um, wolfberries, I mean, sorry, elderberries raw, they have to be cooked raw. They actually have natural occurring arsenic. And so if they're raw, do not eat them. But if they're cooked, that goes away. So you're safe when they're cooked. If you've ever watched the play Arsenic and Old Lace, they drink elderberry wine. There's your connection. <laughs> um, but I will put what these are in the chat. Thank you. I've definitely had like an elderberry making kit in my pantry for a year now and I just never made it. <laughs> it's super simple. I hope if nothing else you saw that um, it's super simple. It, yes, I really did. Because once Sophie's is finished, she's just going to pour it through a strainer yeah. and, and then let it sit for a little while, let it cool down um, somewhat. And then she can put her honey in and she can put her essential oils in and good to go. Now, because I put essential oils in and they may or may not always stay mixed, I will shake this each time before, you know, before I... Well, I, don't, I still don't know why I add the honey because this is how I usually do it. I put the honey in a thing and then I add the oils into the honey, mix it all up and then pour the honey in and that usually helps with the incorporation part. Don't know why I add the honey. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I did see Chelsea said, um, I used these cleaner to clean fresh blood for my dog's paw off my white bed sheets and it totally came out. I have actually had several situations like that as well, where you just put a little, you know, on like your clothing and then you just kind of rub it together, stick it in the laundry if you need to, you know, whatever. It's, it's so powerful. Like it actually, I like when people say, oh yeah, natural cleaners don't really clean very well. And I'm like, well, have you tried beef? Because it actually does. <laughs> Well, with the bathroom remodel that we've had, um, one of the reasons is our shower was leaking. That's the only reason we're starting this. And so when he's taking everything out and he's getting rid of all that mold and mildew, I've been spraying everything down. <laughs> I mean, he's, there's still some old stuff there, but it's he's getting all the mold part out. But I mean, I have been making up a thieves plus everything else and spraying everything down um, to just make sure that we have that extra layer of protection. I um I saw an article about um you know a, like a comparison of thieves and bleach and all kinds of other chemicals um chemical cleaners and one thing that um I think a lot of people can't get past the like it's bleach it kills everything and it smells like it killed everything um but one thing that I read in the article was that uh yeah it kills but it leaves a residue um, where bacteria can grow. So it's going to leave the residue. And I clean with bleach at work all the time. And literally, there's such a bad residue on everything. Um, and yeah, it just, it kind of sets up a home for bacteria to grow. So I've, I've actually seen experiments that people have done comparing like bleach and thieves and all these different things. And white vinegar does a whole lot better job than bleach does. Thieves does a whole lot better. And Thieves oil is that much better like than just the Thieves household cleaner because it's really concentrated, but um, it's in there. Um, but, it, you know, so you could put Thieves oil in your Thieves household cleaner and you'd be that much better off. But it's like bleach is like one of the worst as far as being effective and it's so bad for us. Um, I had a friend that ended up in the hospital with, um, um, I forgot what it was called in her lungs. Like it wasn't pneumonia, but it was some sort of um, kind of buildup in her lungs. And her respiratory doctor said, you have got to stop using bleach. She was spraying everything in her house down and it was, a, it, she was, it almost killed her. So, I mean, she was a fanatic, but, um, but she was also trying to deal with mold that way. And really all it does is make mold look white. It doesn't kill mold. Um, I just want to say the parts about preventative help or help health, basically preventative wellness. Like we're just so good, um, and just a good reminder. The like six months of sugar intake part oh, it kills me every time we talk about it but um for those of you who are kind of like dipping their toe in or getting like you know more used to using more natural things like these are the reasons why we do it for those who are not into it yet um this is why we do it <laughs> like um but i just really loved everything that Lindsay pointed out about the benefits of like um I, like having a toolkit for both but it's so important to have that preventative so that when junk does hit, it's and it's the big thing, um, it doesn't hit as hard. And or there's at least that potential. And I just like having options. And so um, for me, and I know for mom, um, this is a daily take. So you just do a tablespoon for an adult, a teaspoon for a kid. Um, I especially take it at this time of year. I honestly forget to take it in like the spring summertime, just because I'm not as susceptible, you know, that time of year, but I still will when I like remember. But in the colder weather, um, around the holidays when I'm around people I'm not used to being around I, I heavily take it so um, but I just really appreciated everything you guys had to say about the preventative because um, I think that that's something that our society doesn't really focus on that much um, but I do think that there's like so many people out there kind of saying hey like start thinking about this so it was just great points. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a testimonial about um, it. Young Living's immune boosting. So I have a, a friend who is working in an office that COVID has literally been going around. They've had to shut down. They've had to do all kinds of things and they're trying to stay afloat. 
So they finally got back to the office and this person did not get it and uses Young Living products, uses thieves, everything, uses um, inner defense and you know vitamin mm -hmm. supplements. And so somebody said to her, one of the people that has had it said, gosh, you must have a really good immune system. And I thought, wow, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. I said, you need to tell them about Young Living. <laughs> But isn't that awesome? I mean, that's, you know, hopefully, prayerfully, she um, doesn't get it. But wow. And it's been all around her. So, yeah. I love hearing that. Even doctor's offices are saying, like, are, are using vitamin D um, with those patients. Um, and just kind of recognizing there are really good, like, vitamins and minerals that our bodies need so that we can fight things that are, that are not supposed to be in our bodies. Um, but I just love, like, that comparison. That was actually how I got into Young Living. It's very similar to my story. There was a bad flu that was wiping out almost my, like, we almost had a high enough percentage at uh, the university I work at uh, to shut it down for a week like that you know how it, they have percentages like for you know schools and stuff um so we were we were approaching i think it was like 35 percent of faculty staff and students being out with the flu um and my coworkers got it twice and i never got it and i started using essential oils and stuff so um same you know similar situation obviously not as hot topic -y, but um it's definitely incredible when you have a testimony like that like that's so cool mm -hmm. Well, and my husband is an airline pilot, and even though he's got a little bit of a cough right now, he's been, I told him when I got a cold recently, he kept saying, I think that we, you know, we've done a really good job building our immune system, and that's the reason we haven't been sick, and then I get a cold, and I was like, it's your fault, you brought it on, <laughs> but um, he's out there, and he's in the worst of the situations, and he's actually been like shoulder to shoulder with a pilot that was hacking and coughing, and turns out that he got the flu. And my husband came home, had a slight, you know, a couple of years ago, had a slight cold. I started with a slight cold, and I mean, we hit it with everything. When I say everything, I'm talking inner defense um, or the the immune capsule that Lindsay talked about earlier with the oregano, thieves, frankincense, and lemon, and a carrier. Um, and then my elderberry syrup and vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and glutathione, which is what I just wrote in there. Um, I'm trying what to is that? What is glutathione? Glutathione is something our body, well, the best way to illustrate it is um, asparagus. Whenever you eat asparagus afterwards and you go to the bathroom, you smell it, right? That is glutathione in that asparagus helping your body detox. So glutathione is really important. And so taking um, like our sulfurzyme from Young Living has MSM in it and MSM helps produce glutathione in your body. So it, it does a lot of things, but it's really, really important. So glutathione is for elimination because elimination is extremely important, getting the toxins out and aiding that. And then we all have heard about zinc. We've all heard about vitamin D. The last thing you want is to be chasing after these things, the preventative versus the reactive. You do not wanna be chasing after these levels. And one of the things I found out recently is for whatever reason, my vitamin C was so deficient, so very deficient. And I thought I was taking enough and I've, I've upped what I'm taking and, and all um, that I've been going in like tomorrow, I go in for an IV. I've been doing IV I just want to say you're in a group that's real open. <laughs> also, my elderberry's done, so I wanted to show you guys what I do. I have this little like whatever these are called. Um, but you can also just use a regular like strainer. It just you'll probably have little some elderberries that like get through. Not the worst thing in the world. I just like this because it's way more fine and nothing will get through. Um, so don't do what I did one time. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> I did this the other day. <laughs> pull this through the thing straight into the sink. <laughs> I did that with bone broth the other day. I poured it into what I was throwing away and I was like, ah! <laughs> so I always, I mean, literally when I start making elderberry, I put a bowl into the sink. Like, just stick it in there, <laughs> whatever. But I like to do, I mean, super normal. You stick this, can you see that? How hard to see. Move the jar, there you go. Um, so I just stick this and I'm using um, the same, because I'm real lazy. Uh, I'm using the same thing that I poured my water out of because it has a pour spout. And then you just pour it through into there. And I, um, 
have a composter, so I'm going to keep those elderberries for that. Um, you just kind of shake it out, stick it over here, and then uh, my jar, I, this actually might be too big, I'm not sure, and I'll switch jars if I need to, and you just pour it in. Yeah, too big. I'll get a regular, like, course, or um, pint size. But there you go. Easy peasy. And then that's when I'm going to, I'm going to let it cool off. And then I'm going to add in my honey that I'm supposed to add in <laughs> and my essential oils. And then um, I'll put the top on and just stick it in the, fr in the fridge. So, and I don't know if anybody saw it, but this that I opened up the other day is like six months old <laughs> and it's still killing it. So, um, like I said, I just forget sometimes over the warmer weather to take it, but there you go. Well, and Sylvia was saying, I mean, what she was using was called a sieve. <laughs> and if you don't have a sieve and you're using a regular strainer, you could put cheesecloth in um, or even a piece of cotton fabric or whatever, just something that the liquid could go through. And, and you bet it would hold. How many drops of the oils do you add? I would say for that whole batch, maybe um, depending like how many of the oils, like if I were doing thieves, and clove and ginger, I might just add a few drops of um, the, the ginger and the clove, I'm sorry, and the cinnamon bark, and then I would add maybe five drops or thieves. It just kind of depends on what you want. Um, so I just listened to my heart, Sophie says. <laughs> um, but I mean, you don't, you don't need like a ton of drops. You've got a lot going on. Also consider that if you're at this stage and you're doing thieves and you're doing elderberry and all that, if you're fighting something, you definitely need to be taking your probiotics, you know, maybe even twice a day, you know, just to get them up there that much more. So did anybody have any other questions about making elderberry syrup or a storing elderberry syrup or any of the other things that we talked about with the supplements? Who is going to make some ASAP? Very good. I'm definitely going to. <laughs> Joyce is too, because she has her kit and she needs it. <laughs> you need to start taking it. Um, it really, I, 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 I don't know if y'all heard me earlier, but I've had two colds in a month, which is very unusual. And I literally have knocked these out with my preventative, my reactive measures even, um, or even being a little bit more uh, preventative with the elderberry syrup this time. And seriously, I had one day I felt bad and now I feel so much better already. So um, this stuff works. It's incredible. It's been around for a long, long time. Well, if you don't have any more questions, I guess we'll wrap it up. We're glad that y'all were on here tonight and uh, you can reach out to whoever invited you and ask for the recipe if you didn't get it. Um, we can make that available or even any of the other resources we talked about. Um, and we're glad to have had you here. Bye. Bye. Yeah. You're welcome. Good night. Yeah.